Here we're going to look at a problem solving technique known as the principle of mathematical induction. So we'll first run down what it takes to set up this problem solving technique in order to solve a problem. We'll look at a few standard examples and then at the end we'll look at a problem from the 1995 Russian Math Olympiad. So if you're excited about Math Olympiad type problems make sure to hang on until the end. Okay so our goal is to prove a statement we'll call it p of n for all n which are natural numbers. And so the idea with these induction type problems are that you've got a bunch of statements that you want to tr prove are true and those statements are true across natural numbers. So I might as well say here that sometimes this is not all natural numbers but it's all natural numbers after a certain point and maybe if you wanted to be super careful about that you would write n bigger than or equal to n not. Good, so let's run down the steps. So the first step is to establish the base case. So in other words, we wanna show that P evaluated at one is true. In other words, the first statement is true. And I wanna point out that sometimes this one would be replaced with the N not, that would be your starting point. So that should be fairly simple. Then next, we wanna make something called an induction hypothesis. So we'll suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, the statement p of k is true. Or if we're using this variant of induction known as strong induction, we'll suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1 that all of the statements p1, p2, up to pk are true. And then we'll show that the truth of the k plus first statement follows from the base case and the induction hypothesis. In other words, the truth of the kth statement or the truth of all of those statements p1 up to pk. And I want to point out that here, sometimes you use the base case here and sometimes you don't really need to use the base case here. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our first example. So our first example says for all n bigger than or equal to zero, this number five to the 2n plus 1 plus 2 to the 2n plus 1 is divisible by 7. So let's go ahead and check the base case. So in this case, our base case will be n equals 0 because that's you know the start starting point of when this should be true. So we'll set n equal to 0 and maybe notice at 5 to the 1 plus 2 to the 1, notice that's 5 to the 2 times 0 plus 1 and 2 to the 2 times 0 plus 1 equals 7. But 7 is clearly a multiple of 7 or divisible by 7. Those are kind of synonyms. So we're done with the base case. The base case is true. Now let's make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be that this statement is true for some k bigger than or equal to 1. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1 that 5 to the 2k plus 1 plus 2 to the 2k plus 1 is divisible by 7. So I want to go ahead and point out what that really means. So that means that 5 to the 2k plus 1 plus 2 to the 2k plus 1 is equal to 7 times m, where m is some natural number. So that would be that 7 divides this left-hand side, or this left-hand side is a multiple of 7. Again, those are like synonyms. Now we're going to want to consider the next case. So in other words, we'll plug k plus 1 into this. That will give us 5 to the 2k plus 3 plus 2 to the 2k plus 3. So we'll notice real quick that we can factor some stuff out of each of these terms. So that's going to be 25 times 5 to the 2k plus 1 and then plus 4 times 2 to the 2k plus 1. So I just factored a 5 squared and a 2 squared out of the first and the last term. Now the next trick is we want to add 0 to this equation and we're going to do that in a way so that we can use the fact that 5 to the 2k plus 1 plus 2 to the 2k plus 1 is divisible by 7. So here I'll go ahead and add 25 times 2 to the 2k plus 1. And that benefits us because we can group these two terms together factor a 25 out and we've got this thing up here which is divisible by 7. But if we do that we also have to subtract 25 times 2 to the 2k plus 1. But we're in luck there because 
in that term, we can factor out the two to the two K plus one, and we have four minus 25, which is 21, another multiple of seven. So just to reiterate, now we've got 25 times five to the two K plus one plus two to the two K plus one plus two to the two K plus one times negative 21. After factoring that out, we've got four minus 25. But now what we can notice is that this thing right here is a multiple of seven, it's seven times M. And then this thing right here is seven times three or negative seven times three, if you will. But since each of those are a multiple of seven, then that means that we can factor a seven out of this entire right hand side and we'll be left with stuff that is a natural number. But then that means that five to the two K plus three plus two to the two K plus three is divisible by seven, which is exactly what we wanted to show to finish this example to be proven by induction. Okay, I'll clean this up and we'll look at another. For our next example, we're gonna prove a closed form for the sum of some odd squares. So in fact, we're gonna prove that one squared plus three squared plus five squared all the way up to two n minus one squared is equal to four n cubed minus n over three. And we're gonna do this, like I said, by induction. So let's go ahead and look at our base case. So our base case is n equals one. But notice this is most definitely true because one squared is going to be the same thing as four times one cubed minus one over three. Notice that right hand side is just a fancy way of writing three over three. So our base case is confirmed. Now let's go ahead and make an induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, we know the kth statement is true. So in other words, we have one squared plus three squared all the way up to two k minus one quantity squared equals four k cubed minus k over three. Great. And now we want to consider the k plus first case. So let's do that. So the k plus first case will be all of these terms plus one more, and we're actually gonna use that. So here we'll have one squared plus three squared plus all the way up to two k minus one squared plus two k plus one squared. So that'll be the next case. But by grouping, we can put these first k terms together and apply the induction hypothesis. So if we do that, we'll get 4k cubed minus k over 3 plus, now it's going to be 2k plus 1 quantity squared. So that's going to give us 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Great, now we can go ahead and give those things a common denominator just to help ourselves out. So if we do that, we'll get 4k cubed minus k plus 12k squared plus 12k plus three all over three. Great. Now what we have to do is try to factor that or maybe try to group and factor it. And I'll leave it to you guys to check all of the factoring, but it's not too hard to see that this is exactly equal to four times the quantity K plus one cubed minus the quantity K plus one all over three. And that has the right form for our setup. And so that finishes our induction step here. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean this up. Then we're going to look at an example of something proven with strong induction. So for our last example, we're going to look at a problem from the 1995 Russian Math Olympiad. So let's suppose that we've got a sequence of numbers, a n, as n goes from 0 to infinity. So that's like a 0, a 1, a 2, and so on and so forth. And it satisfies the following setup. So a1 is equal to 1, and then am plus n plus am minus n equals half 
A2M plus A2N. And then our goal is to find A sub 1995. And in fact, we'll approach this in a way so that we really find a closed formula for A sub N. So the first thing that I wanna do is explore this a little bit to get some sort of guess for what the closed formula should be. And then after we've got that exploration done, we can actually you know, come to a solution pretty quickly using strong induction. So the first thing that I want to notice is A of zero is going to be equal to zero. And let's see why that is true. So if we plug M equals zero and N equals zero into this equation, the left-hand side is two A zero and the right-hand side is one half times two A zero. In other words, it's A zero. But the only number that's twice itself is zero. So in other words, A zero has to be equal to zero. Then the next thing that we want to notice is that if we plug in M equals M and N equals zero, so in other words, M is like free and then N equals zero, we get a nice relationship between A sub 2M and A sub M. So let's see what we get there. So this is going to give us A sub M plus A sub M equals one half A sub 2M plus A sub zero. But we already determined that a sub zero is equal to zero, so we can replace this with zero. Then we can move things around a little bit, and that will show us that a sub two m is equal to four a sub m. So now with this information, we can get a bunch of values of the sequence. So notice that a sub zero is zero. We've got a sub one is one. Then a sub two m is equal to four a sub m, but that tells us that a sub two is equal to four times a sub one. In other words, it's four. And then also a sub four is gonna be four a sub two. So anywhere, in other words, that's gonna be 16. And then a sub eight is gonna be four a sub four. So four times 16 is 64. And now I think we can see a pattern happening. So notice four is equal to two squared. There's our two down there. 16 is equal to four squared. There's our four down there. And finally, 64 is equal to eight squared. And there's our eight down there. So it looks like a n is maybe equal to n squared. So maybe let's put that as a question right here. A sub n equals n squared, question mark. But maybe before we make that our official conjecture and work with how to prove that by our strong induction, let's figure out some other value of A sub n. Maybe let's try to find A sub three using that formula up there. So notice we can get a sub three by taking maybe m equals two and n equals one. So let's say m equals two, n equals one into that equation up there. So that's gonna give us a sub three plus a sub one equals one half a sub four plus a sub two. Great. But now notice that's gonna be a sub three plus one equals one half. A sub four, we determined that was 16. A sub two, we determined that was four. Great. And so notice we've got one half, 16 plus four, that's gonna be 10. But now solving here, we get a sub three equals nine, which is equal to three squared. So that gives us some more motivation that we're on the right track. And now furthermore, we can apply this rule to find a sub six very quickly. So a sub six is gonna be four times nine. Well, that's 36, but that's clearly six squared. And then you can keep playing this game to get more and more values, but it turns out that you'll always get n squared because that's the value for this sequence. That's a closed form. Okay, so maybe I'll go ahead and clean this up. I'll keep some of the values that we have found and then we'll finish it off with induction. So we're finishing up this Russian math Olympiad problem. So far, we've conjectured that a sub n equals n squared, where a sub n was the sequence we defined with the following rules. Okay, and along the way to proving this claim, we have shown that a sub zero is zero. Well, that's obviously zero squared. And we've also shown that a sub two m is equal to four times a sub m. So I wanna point out that since we know a sub zero is zero, the base case is totally done. 
Now we're ready to make our induction hypothesis, which in this case will be a strong induction hypothesis. So instead of assuming that our statement is true for some k value, we're gonna assume that it's true for all values up to that k value. So it's gonna look a little something like this. So let's suppose for m between one and k, we have a sub m equals m squared. And we want to proceed just as before. In other words, we want to show that a sub k plus 1 equals k plus 1 squared. That's where we want to end up. So we're assuming this is true for m between 1 and k, and then we'll prove that it's true for k plus 1. Okay, so let's get at it. So the thing that I'll do is I'll set m equal to k in this equation and n equal to 1. So maybe from our defining equation, we have the following setup. So we have a sub k plus 1 plus a sub k minus 1 equals 1 half a sub 2k plus a sub 2. Great. But now I want to point out that this right hand side can be simplified using this rule right here which we developed previously. So this is going to be 1 half and now we're going to have 4 a sub k plus and then we know a sub 2 is 4. So notice this thing is just 2 times a sub k plus 2. Okay. And then next what we can do is notice by our induction hypothesis, we know that this is equal to k minus 1 squared. And then by our induction hypothesis, we know that this is equal to k squared. And here, it was important to have a strong induction hypothesis because notice we didn't just use the kth assumption, we used the k minus first assumption. But putting that all together, we see that a sub k plus 1 is going to be equal to 2k squared plus 2. So that's going to be that. Minus k minus 1 quantity squared. So now we just have some simplification to do. So let's see what we get for that. So we'll have 2k squared plus 2 minus the quantity k squared minus 2k plus 1. But now just by kind of simple arithmetic, that's going to turn into k squared plus 2k plus 1, which is exactly k plus 1 squared. And so now if we look at this bit right here and this bit right here, that's exactly what we needed to finish this proof by induction. So this claim is true. But now since this claim is true, it's easy to find a sub 1995. Now we know that a sub 1995 is exactly equal to 1995 squared. Good, and that's a good place to stop.